Hello and welcome to the second part of the bedroom rendering tutorial. This tutorial was brought to you by Akrito. In this tutorial we're going to discuss about how to add lights and set up the rendering for this bedroom. We're going to do things one at a time. We'll begin by adding an HDRI lightning, that means an exterior light, and then we'll focus on the interior lights, and afterwards we're going to place cameras and render it. Okay, so let's begin. I'm going to start in the perspective view. Just hit Alt W on your keyboard to maximize the viewport. Okay, now we're going to add a V-Ray light. Go to the Create tab and choose Lights. From here, from the drop-down menu, select V-Ray. Okay, now select V-Ray light and hold and drag anywhere in the perspective. The position of the light is not important, its presence is. I'm just going to drag this V-Ray light right here, near the uh, model. Okay, now let's go under the Modify tab. On the Modify tab, the first thing we're going to do is change the type from Plane to Dome. This will allow, uh, this will allow, to allow me to load an HDR into this light. Okay, now we're going to change some of its properties. First, a multiplier of 13 is huge. Let's begin with a multiplier of 1. Okay, now let's go a little lower. And under texture, we're going to load here an HDRI. But first, we're going to load the, the HDRI image into our material editor. So, open up the material editor. Okay, now we're going to need an empty slot. Okay, find an empty slot. And then go to the Get Material from the horizontal toolbar. Click Get Material. And from here, double click on Bitmap. Okay, we have two HDR images. One is by day, and the other one is for night. Okay, let's select the by day one. And hit open. Okay, the, this dialog will pop up. Just make sure that real pixels is checked and hit OK. Okay, we've loaded our HDR image into the material editor. We can close the material map browser now. Okay, first thing we're going to do is we're going to change the mapping type. Now, uh, this image will not be used as a texture, but as an environment map. So let's just select environment from the coordinates rollout. Okay, now on the mapping procedure, we don't want to, uh, to have it as a screen. We need it to be placed in a sphere. So let's choose spherical environment. Okay, we have set the <coughs> HDR in the material editor. Now it's time to place it under the V-Ray Light Texture tab. Just drag and drop the image and place it under Texture. On the method, choose Instance and OK. OK, so now basically the light will emit, all the photons the light that this light will emit will be based on the uh, image that we've loaded in the Material Editor. Okay, so now what I want to do, I want to make sure that the image is placed correctly. Okay, so let's open the material editor again. And I want to see this HDR image in my viewport. Now you can do this by opening up the environment window. Just go under rendering and choose environment. Okay, here under environment and effects. Just drag and drop the HDR image into the environment map. Choose instance again and OK. Now this means that this, this HDR image will be used as a background image. Furthermore, close environment and effects and material editor. Now go into the perspective properties. Just click on the little plus and from here On the perspective, where is it? Not here on the smooth plus highlight. Sorry, go on the viewport background and choose show background. 
Now, for now, we're going to just click on Viewport Background. Okay, now this window will allow me to set a viewport, a viewport background. Just check Use Environment Background. Okay, and furthermore, also make sure that Display Background is checked. And hit OK. Okay, so now we've loaded the uh, HDR image into the background to the viewport background. Now what I want to do, I want to make sure that this image will be visible on uh, through the window. The problem with, with this HDR image is that it, it will only refresh if you maximize and minimize the viewport again. So let's just view like this and hit Alt W. Okay, as you can see, this has been already updated. Let's hit Alt W again. And as you can see, the HDR image is just is adjusting. Okay, I want now to have the, the most light to be visible through the window. So we're going to rotate the HDR image. Remember that the HDR image is an image placed on a sphere. Okay, open the material editor. Now, select again the HDR image and we're going to play with the offset under coordinates rollout. Just increase the U offset and you will notice this directly in the viewport. Let's give it a value of 0.1. Okay, we need to rotate it more, 0.3 maybe. Okay, now as you can see, it's uh, it, there's a lot of light out there, but still we need to increase this more. I want to have the, the sun directly passing through the window. Okay, I think this is pretty much okay. Now the problem with this HDR uh, is that it's, uh, it's very exposed. We need to correct this a little bit. Just scroll down on the material editor and find the output rollout. Click on it to open it. And we're going to play with the RGB level. Just decrease this value to, let's say, 0.8. OK, now as you can see, we, we, we have more details here. So let's play again with the offset, 0.7. Now it's too much, 0.55. Okay, so as you can see, here's the light. We go with the value on V also. Let's give the value of 0.1. Ah, which is, we need negative values here. I want to bring it a little lower. So let's give the value of minus 0.1. Okay, maybe this is too much. Let's give it a 0 0.03. We can minus. Okay, so I think it's pretty much okay. Now the only thing remaining is the U offset. Let's give the value of 0 0.75. Okay, so I think we're good. Okay, so now let's see how this will render up. Just zoom in a little bit, place the perspective camera in the room and hit render production. Now it's just the wall, hit escape to cancel it, and just zoom in a little bit more. Now this will take some time to render, don't worry about that. We're going to decrease the quality while we do this. We just want to see how much light enters at this point.
okay, that's almost no light. There is just a little bit of light right here, but we're going to increase this. Now the problem is when uh, uh, with uh, the exterior lights, the problem is that uh, uh, the light, the photons will die once they reach a surface. So we need to uh, increase their life. And we need to just increase the life so they can bounce in the room. In this way, uh, we will make the room more, more lighted. Okay, so let's just make a couple of settings before we move on, uh, because this is taking a lot of time. It takes 1 minute and 20 seconds just to, to do a quick rendering. I'm going to open the render setup. Okay, and for, for once, I just want to decrease the resolution. 320 by 240. Okay, now go on the settings rollout. And from here, the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to decrease the render region division. This is the size of the bucket, to 32. Okay, and mo moreover, the global subdivisions multiplier. This holds all the subdivisions and all the subsamples in, in the entire scene. I'm going to decrease this to a value of 0.5. Okay. Now go under indirect illuminate, illumination. Now we're going to extend the life of each photon that comes from the V-ray light from the sky. First, I'm just going to enable the indirect illumin illumination. Just click on on. Okay, now. To make the photons live longer, we need to use, both on primary bounces and on secondary bounces, light cache. Now what light cache does, it just takes all the photons from the scenes and continue their existence. Okay, now let's go ahead and open the V-Ray light cache rollout by clicking on it and we're going to arrange some things around here also. Now the subdivisions of 1000 is a little too high. Let's lower it to 500. Okay, and just click on show calc phase because I want to see what, what's happening before the rendering ends. Okay, now the indirect illumination is set. We've lowered the resolution. We've lowered the, general, the overall quality. Now what I want to do more is decrease the anti-aliasing. Now go under the V-Ray tab, and under V-Ray Image Sampler Anti-Aliasing, we have the type Adaptive Subdivision. That means that we have a rollout called Adaptive Subdivision Image Sampler. Open this up by clicking on it. Now we have a min rate of minus 1 and a max rate of 2. This max rate of 2 means that uh, each pixel will be divided in 8 pixels. Now this is what takes so much time. Let's just decrease the max rate to zero. Okay, now let's go ahead and render this again. As you can see, the first thing that uh, is being calculated is the light cache. And there will be more photons and more light in the scene. Okay, now as you can see, there's a lot of places that uh, before didn't have light, but now they do. Okay, now when we're dealing with interior images, uh, you will constantly have a problem uh, with the light. This is also caused by uh, gamma. Let's go ahead and change the gamma. Go under Customize and choose Preferences. Here, go under Gamma and Loot tab and click on Enable Gamma Loot Correction. Now, let's change the gamma from 1 to 2.2 and hit OK. OK. Now, as you can see, this is much, much better. We have a lot of light here. 
but still not enough. Um, we're going to make the viewer light a little stronger. Just select the viewer light from your scene. If you don't have it selected, just go open the select by name tab. Okay. And make sure that only light is selected. And just double click on V-Ray light here. Okay. Let's go under intensity and change the multiplier from 1 to maybe 2. Okay, let's go ahead and do this again. This image, the first image, <coughs> will be an image by day. That means that only the outside light will be visible and there will be no inside lights. We'll cover the inside lights after we finish this one. Okay, so we pretty much have a good result, a satisfying result. But the problem is that it's still not enough light. Okay, uh, we're just going to increase again the multiplier of the exterior lights from 2 to maybe 4. Okay, and go ahead and render this again. At this point, we just need some uh, general ambient light. Uh, we will make the light more, uh, the image more um, lighted um, when we, after we place the camera. We'll just increase the shutter speed so uh, more light will be captured. Okay, I think we pretty much have a good result here. Okay, the next thing we're going to do, we're going to place a camera. Get closer uh, render production and go to top viewport. I pressed T on my keyboard and hit Z to zoom. Okay, we're going to add a very physical camera. Go on the create tab and choose cameras. From the rollout menu, select V-Ray and from here select V-Ray physical camera. Now I'm just going to hold and drag to place the V-Ray physical camera. Okay. Now go on to the perspective view by pressing P on your keyboard. Just rotate the image. Okay, so at this point uh, everything will move very slowly. That's because uh, the HDR image needs to be uh, placed, needs to be rendered in the viewport. Uh, okay, we're going to disable this. Just go on the wireframe. Viewport background and uncheck show background. Okay, so this will allow me to work easily. Okay, so now at this point I'm just going to drag the camera on the z-axis. Okay, I want to do the same thing with the, with the target. To quickly select the target, just right-click and select camera target. Click on it and also move the camera target on the z-axis okay right click again and select the camera now i'm just going to press c on my keyboard to activate the camera okay now this is pretty much what the camera will see okay the first thing that i want to do i want to see the safe frames now i want to see exactly how much this camera will see. For that I'm just going to click on V-Ray physical camera here and check show save frames. Okay, so this is pretty much what we're going to see. Okay, 
Let's go onto the Modify tab and play a little bit with the camera parameters. We can drag this common panel right here. Okay, now let's play a little bit with it. Let's play with the film gate and focal length. Now, I'm just going to increase the film gate so there's more detail visible. Okay, but what I want to do, I want to drag the camera so I can see even the painting in the left here. I will use the dolly camera. Just click on it and hold and drag in the viewport. Now, we probably just move too much. That's why I'm going to orbit a little bit. Deactivate the angle snap. So it moves freely. And just pan, hold the mouse wheel button and move the camera like this. Okay, the problem is here that uh, I, I it's not it's almost everything dark because uh, Max is trying to render the viewport with uh, the existing lights, not the default lights. Let's switch back to the default lights. Click on Smooth plus, hi plus Highlights, go under Lighting and Shadows, and from here check Illuminate with default lights. Okay, so now it's more clear what I'm trying to do here. Okay, I'll just play a little bit with the camera. Now, if I want to move the camera, the camera target, I'm just going to select walkthrough and just hold and drag in the viewport. Okay, something like this, and just change the film gate to maybe 55. Okay, so let's say that this will be the image. Day, daytime image. Okay, there are a couple of settings that we need to do before we render this. First thing is we're going to decrease the F number from a value of 8 to a value of 2. Now, uh, a value of 8 will not allow uh, will not allow many light light to pass through the camera's lens. So let's just decrease the F number to 2. Okay. Now let's go ahead and render this. Let's see what's happening. Okay, so this is pretty much the result. Now we're just going to uh, change some of its settings. Okay, now let's come back to the viewer physical camera and let's just continue. Okay, let's go a little lower. Now on the white balance we have a D65. Let's change it to a D55. D65 will make the image look more orangey, while D55 is, mo is close to neutral. Okay, now we're going to play with the shutter speed. This will allow uh, more light to enter the camera. Now, a value of 200 is, is a little too high. Let's just decrease this to a value of, let's say, 80. Let's see what's the difference. I'm going to clone, clone the rendered frame, frame image so I can see before and after and render it. You can clearly see from now that uh, there's more light in the scene, but it's still not enough. I'm just going to decrease the shutter speed even more to a value of 60 and render this again.
Okay, so we pretty much have a good result. Now, we're going to take care of some problems here, but at this point I'm satisfied with uh, how the light works. I like the way that uh, uh, this area is almost burned. Okay, now let's go ahead and save the light cache. We're just going to make some uh, change changes in the render setup and save the light cache. We only need to calculate this once and then we can move on. Let's open the render setup. Okay, first thing, we're going to increase the resolution to a value of 800 by 600. We want an indirect illumination, illumination tab and we're going to increase the subdivisions from 500, light cache subdivision, from 500 to 1500 and the sample size to 0 0.00001. Okay, now go a little lower and we have on render end tab. Make sure you check auto save. Hit browse to tell it where to save the image. Let's give it a name. Alright. Cash zero one. <coughs> and check switch to save map. Okay, at this point I want to make sure that the DMC sampler under settings tab is set to uh, under DMC sampler, the global subdivisions multiplier is set to 1 and not 0 0.5. Now, this setting, uh, a value of 0 0.5, will lower all the subdivisions and samples from all the properties in 3D Max to half. A value of 1 will just leave them as they are. Okay, now we're going to increase the value of the V-Ray light also. Just select, hit select by name and select the V-Ray light and hit OK. Now go a little lower on the light's properties and under sampling we're going to increase the subdivisions. The subdivisions of 8 is a little low. We're just going to increase it to 24. OK, now go ahead and hit Render. And just leave it to calculate the light cache. We'll only do this once. Okay, so we finished calculating the light cache. We're just going to use it from the file. Just minimize the rendering. Go under indirect illumination. And as you can see on mode, it's already set from the file. Okay, let's move on. Now, I want to uh, make this image a little smoother. As you can see, it's very jaggy. There's a lot of huge pixels showing. We're going to take care of that for now. Okay, so we're just going to leave light cache on the secondary bounces. On the primary bounces, we're going to load our irradiance map. Our irradiance map will make the necessary smoothing for the image to look good. Close the light cache by clicking on it and open the irradiance map rollout. Now, as you can see, the current preset is set to high. Let's just give it a very low preset and Choose Show Calc Phase and Show Direct Light from the options. Okay, now what I want to do more at this point, I want to add some ambient occlusion. As you can see, we have some of the edges, the wall edges are not very visible. Now, ambient light will make those look better. Just click on 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 ambient occlusion and let's change the radius from uh, let's just leave it 10 meters and let's hit render at this point I just want to see how the radiance map and ambient occlusion will look I don't want any detail but when I'm satisfied I'm going to use a high note
Okay, so I calculated a very low variant of uh, Iradian's map. Now, the only thing that bothers me is uh, the ambient occlusion. As you can see now, we have some black lines here. But uh, what I want to do, I just want to make them a little more bigger. So they don't um, create such big contrast. Okay, let's go under the render setup in the indirect illumination and let's play a little bit with ambient occlusion. Now the radius is set to 10. I'm just going to increase this five times, five times. Let's make it 50. Okay, so with all these settings made, I think we're pretty much good and uh, we can do the same thing with the Iradian's map. I'm going to set the current preset from very low to high and do the same thing as we did with the light cache, namely check autosave, browse, name it, audience map 01, and check switch to save map. Settings are okay. Now all we have to do is render this. This will take some time to render. I will pause the recording while we're doing this. Just hit render. Okay, so we finished calculating the radiance map. As you can see, now uh, all those uh, dark areas are um, more diffused now. Okay, so we can move on and set the final steps for rendering. Now we finished uh, everything with uh, the indirect illumination. We have the Iradian's map and light cache already computed. Now we just want to render the final image. We'll make an image of 800 by 600. Okay, so let's begin. First of all, let's just hit Render Output. Click on Files. Just go under your folder. Create a new folder called Renderings. And let's call it Day Time. And make it a JPEG. Now, it's very important to use the same gamma as we've said before. So we need a gamma of 2.2. Uh, if you don't do this, you will have a very dark image. Hit override under gamma and change the value of 1 to 2.2. This step is very important. Don't forget about it. And hit save. OK, make the best. JPEG quality and OK. OK, moving on. Let's go under image sampler anti-aliasing. Now, we don't want to use the deputy subdivision anymore. This is a good anti-aliasing uh, sampler, but it's not the best. Let's switch from adaptive subdivision to adaptive DMC. Now, under adaptive DMC image sampler, open the rollout, you see min subdivisions 1 and mod subdivisions 4. Now, this will take care of all those pixels here. As you can see, it's very jaggy. So this will clear everything up. We'll have very straight lines and uh, okay. Okay, so we finished setting up the uh, anti-aliasing. This minimizes everything. Indirect light illumination is already set. Let's go to settings tab. Now let's increase the bucket size. As you can see, the bucket size now it, we've set it to 32. Let's make it a bucket size of 64 by 64. Increase the dynamic memory limit here to your maximum allowable RAM memory. I'll make the value of 6000. Okay, this is not really important, but I just want to make sure that I don't run out of memory. Okay, so one last thing that we want to do is under DMC sampler, we need to decrease the noise threshold and increase the global subdivisions multiplier. Remember, global mul mul subdivisions multiplier will represent everything that's subdivisions or samples. The value of 1 will leave the same value as the default value and a higher value will multiply that value with this number. For instance, in the Fury Light, we have a sampling subdivisions of 24 and if global subdivision is set to 1, then these subdivisions will remain 24. If we make a value of 2, for instance here, then these subdivisions will be 48. Okay, uh, this, the global subdivisions multiplier will almost double the rendering time. 
but it's worth it. Okay, so let's change the minimum samples. This minimum samples represent the shadows, the quality of the shadows. So this means that all the lights will be will be allowed to use a minimum of eight eight samples. Let's change this to sixty. Okay, and one more thing. Let's decrease the noise threshold to zero point zero zero one. Okay. And the final thing, we need to have, a, we, I want to have a stamp to see exactly how much render time will it take. Just to check the frame stamp. I'm going to erase everything here except the render time. Just delete that. And justify it. I like it on the right and with no full width. Okay, I think this, everything is set up correctly. I'm just going to hit render and let's see what's happening. I'm going to pause the video on while this is rendering. See you after. Okay, so this is pretty much the result. The rendering took 27 minutes to complete. As you can see, we have a, a very good result. There is a little or no noise. Okay, the, there's still some noise in this area. If you want to get rid uh, of this also, just need to increase even more the global subdivisions multiplier. A value of 4 or maybe 5 will definitely get rid of this, but uh, the rendering time could take up to 2, 3, or maybe 4 hours. Okay, so we will leave it like that, like this for now, and we will go ahead and start the nighttime rendering. Okay, now the difference between the nighttime rendering and the daytime rendering is the, the lightning. So let's go ahead and just save this. Bedroom daytime. Okay, so this is pretty much the rendering for daytime and let's save it again as bedroom night time this time. Okay, and we're going to work on this one from this point on. Okay, let's switch to perspective view. The first thing is uh, that we don't need an exterior lightning. Um, we, don't, we only need a background image, but we don't really need any light coming from the window. And just select the V-Ray light and delete it from the scene. Okay, now let's take care of the background in the first place. Open the material editor and we're going to replace this HDR image with another one. Just go under bitmap parameters and bitmap, click on this huge button right here and select sky night. Hit open. Okay, click OK. Okay, at this point I, I don't want to have a V offset, just set it to zero, and U offset again to zero. Okay, it looks a little bit, a little bit too bright on the, on the horizon, so we're going to make it even more dark. Let's just change the RGB level from 0 0.8 to 0 0.5 maybe, and 0 0.2, 0 0.1. Let's just leave it 0.8. Okay, and change, give it the RGB offset, a negative value of maybe 0.2 or 0.3, something like this. Okay, now we're going to do the rendering from the same camera, but first we need to add lights. We will use two types of lights. We will use the Omni light for, uh, for the lamps. And we will use some spotlights for uh, for the spots. Okay, so let's begin. I'm just going to go on the top viewport, press F3 on my keyboard to only see wireframe, and go on the create panel, lights, on the drop down, choose standard, and from here select only. I'm going to click exactly in the center of the lamp. Okay, so I've placed the only light here. Now let's make sure that it's placed correctly on horizontally. If it's not, just drag it up until it sits exactly in the middle of the lamp. Okay. 
okay. Now the problem with this lamp is that I don't want to uh, light going spreading too far from it. So let's go under modify panel and play a little bit with it. As you can see the light type is on, we have shadows which are on and the shadows are set to very shadow. Okay, let's go in the intensity color attenuation rollout. Now we want to use a decay for it. Let's change the type of decay from none to inverse. As you can see there's a huge blue sphere surrounding the lights. That's the area from which the light will start dimming. Now this sphere is too big. Let's just make it a little low, a little smaller. We're still in the decay tab. Just decrease the start to about 10 or maybe even lower. Okay, let's just give it a minute 5. And this should be okay. And let's go back to the top viewport and duplicate the light for the other lamp. Just hold and drag on the X axis until it's placed exactly in the middle of the right lamp. Now, when the clone options dialog appear, make sure that you set this light to instance. This is very important because I want to have the possibility to change both lights at a time. If you set to copy, you won't be able to do this. So just choose instance and hit OK. OK, so we have two instance lights for the lamps. Now what I want to do next is add target spots for the spots. Go under create, lights, standard, and from here select a free spot. Just click in the middle of this circle. Okay, we've created a spot. It's going to go in the front viewport. I'm pressing F on my keyboard. And I'm going to take this a little higher. Maybe here. Okay. Now I'm going to take care of this light. As you can see, it's positioned correctly. There are a couple of things that I want to change. First, let's move it a little, even a little higher. Let's drag it a little higher. Okay, now I want to increase the cone radius. As you can see, there are two cones. There's a, a light blue and a dark blue. The light blue cone is the maximum intensity cone, and the, black, the darker blue uh, cone is <coughs> the end of the light. Okay, let's go under Modified tab. As you can see, the light is on. Set to Spot, Shadows on, and set to Viray Shadow. Let's go under Intensity co uh, attenuation, Color Attenuation. Not this for now, just let's go to the Spotlight Parameters Rollout. Now we have Hotspot Beam and Fall Off Field. Just increase the Fall Off Field to about something like this. I just want to make sure that the light Okay, so I think this is good. Now, I want to uh, attenuate this light also. I don't want to have the same intensity from start till end. For this, I will use a decay. Now, set the decay type from none to inverse. Uh, we should be able to see the start. Let's just click show. Uh, it's a little too close. Value of 5. Let's set the value to about 50. Now you can see there's a, a cylinder. There's, I don't know what it's called. Uh, from this green circle, the light will start to dim. Now we just need to move this even lower. Maybe a value like this. So the light will dim only from half, maybe even more, let's say something like this. Okay, so I think this is pretty much okay. Okay, now we need to duplicate these lights to all the spots. This light to all the spots. Let's go on the top viewport. Now, one more thing. In the front viewport, as you can see, the light goes, the light symbol goes a little too lower. <clears throat> we'll just change this by in the general parameters rollout near the targeted area 
just decrease this value to something like 160. Okay, let's go back to the top viewport, press F3 on your keyboard to switch to wireframe, and we're just going to duplicate this. Hold and drag, using Shift on your keyboard, place it right there, instance, and make three copies. One here, if they're not positioned correctly, just position them manually, and this one also the same. Now, uh, as we only work on the lights at this point, I'm just going to set the filter to lights. So, now I've made sure that I can only select lights. Now let's select all the four lights at once. Just drag using shift and drag and place them here also. Just set them also to instance and hit OK. OK, let's see in the perspective viewport what's going on. As you can see, the, uh, the area from where the light is dimming is visible. That's because we, we checked show under intensity color attenuation. I'm just going to uncheck this. Okay, so now only the selected lights has the <coughs> uh, decay circle visible. Now moving on, I'm just going to add another set of spots here near this piece of furniture. Just go on the top viewport, press F3 and shift and drag to position this here. It will still be instance. Oh no, let's just, let's just make it a copy. Make it a copy. Okay, move this to the center. Now, I've noticed that this light isn't positioned correctly and I think this goes for all the lights in this area. Just position exactly in the middle. much better now. Okay, so we, we, we've placed another cone here. Now I'm going to make another instance with this light. Just about here. Instance and three copies. And just position them exactly in the middle of the spot. Okay. Okay, now we're going to select all those four lights and arrange them on the front viewport because the area from which the spot starts here is lower. Just take them here. Okay. I'm going to just select one of them and I'm going to decrease the falloff field in the spotlight parameters. I don't want to have the same spotlight as falloff as the other lights. Okay, something like this, and maybe even the hotspot beam could be a little lower. Okay, now the decay it starts very low for this light. I'm just going to take this up a little bit. Okay, so now basically we have three set of lights. We have three instances of lights. We have this light, this set of lights, this set of lights, and the omni set of lights. Okay. Now, we've placed all the lights. Now, what we do, what we have to do next is prepare the rendering engine for them. First, we're going to have to get rid of all the settings that were set for the daylight. Just open the render setup dialog and we're going to cover them one by one. Let's start by common. First, I don't want to have this big resolution because uh, in the beginning we're just going to do some previews. Let's just change this to 320 by 240 and uncheck render output. If you if you don't uncheck this, you will overwrite the previous file. Okay, now let's go ahead to the V-Ray tab. Let's open the image sampler anti-aliasing. Select the type from adaptive DMC, set it to adaptive subdivision. We need a very low anti-aliasing at this point because we don't need any detail. We just we're just interested in setting the lights. Okay, let's go to indirect indirect illumination and let's play with this for now. Uncheck ambient occlusion and let's begin with light cache. We're going to set both primary bounces and secondary bounces to light cache. Okay, and here let's make sure that we do not overwrite the previous saved light cache. Let's change the mode from file to single frame and uncheck autosave. 
Okay, let's change the subdivisions again to 500. We need a low, low value for previewing and sample size to 0 0.02. Hit enter. Okay, now well, let's go to the last tab, to the settings tab. Let's increase the noise threshold to 0 0.01. Okay, the minimum samples to 8 and the global subdivisions multiplier to 0.5. I've decreased every quality in the scene because I just want to preview the lights. Okay, moreover, go to the V-Ray system and increase the bucket size from 64 to 32. Okay, I think we're pretty much good. Let's go to the camera and let's have a quick render. Render setup and hit render. Now we only have lights from interior and the light cache will take a little longer to render because there are a lot of photons in the scene. I can clearly see from now that uh, there's too much light. Don't worry about that, we're going to set it correctly. And another thing, I would, I would also need a light in, the, in this part of the room which is probably uh, where the entrance is placed. Uh, as you can see, there's no, there's almost dark areas here and very bright areas. Okay, I'll just hit escape to cancel the rendering, and we're just going to do. We're going to create here a V-Ray light. Go to Create tab, Light, and from the drop-down window, select V-Ray. Select the V-Ray light, and let's just place this type of V-Ray light. Let's just set the time to play and create the period light here, just above the camera. Okay, in the perspective view, I should be able to change its vertical position. Let's try it a little higher. Go to front view and make sure it's just high. Very high, but not high enough to be placed in the ceiling. Okay, let's switch by pressing C on your keyboard. You can switch to camera. Okay. Now let's open the render frame window again and let's have a look what's going on here. First thing that I've noticed is that these spots are very bright. Now, there are two things that I could do. I could increase the gamma, the general gamma for this, because we don't, we're not uh, basing our lightning only from the exterior, but we use interior lights. So we can just decrease the gamma. Let's do this. Customize preferences. Gamma and Loot. Just uncheck Enable Gamma Loot Correction and hit OK. Now as you can see everything becomes very... Uh, everything has a lot of contrast now, but it's probably too much. Let's go back. Enable Gamma Loot Correction and let's set this value to 1.6 and hit OK. Okay, so I think this is a pretty much good value, but still the free spots are too bright. Okay, we have the spot selected, and let's just change the decay to a way lower value. We're going to do this for these spots, and also for the stock spots that are placed in the <coughs> in furniture. Just decrease this. Okay, now let's render our scene again. Now things start to look, to look way better, but the only problem that I see is uh, that the V-Ray light that I've placed just above the camera is not bright enough. Okay, I'm just going to cancel this. And switch to perspective view, select the V-Ray light. As you can see, it's set to a very low value. Let's change this from 4 to 13. Let's go back to our camera. Okay, so I've rendered it and... Uh, there still are some problems, the V-Ray light still doesn't have uh, enough intensity and the spots right here are too bright. Let's take care of that. Okay, first of all, let's take care of these spots. So we have a multiplier of 1, let's set it to 0.6 maybe. 
OK. And let's go to perspective view. Select this movie light. And give it an even higher value of maybe 15. OK, let's go to camera again and render. Now we're going to do exactly the same steps as we did for uh, daylight rendering. Just going to compute the light cache first, then the radiance map, and then render the final image. Okay, it's a little better. Still, the only uh, problem that remains is uh, <clears throat> that the spots uh, in the ceiling are a little bit too bright also. As you can see, this uh, area is almost burned. Let's just cancel our rendering and select uh, spots and decrease the multiplier value to by about 0.9. Okay, now we're just going to make the settings for the light cache. Open the rendering dialog and first let's go backwards. Let's start with settings. In increase the global subdivision multiplier to 1. Go to common, switch to 800 by 600. Indirect illumination and select subdivisions to 100. 1500 and the sample size to 0 0.01. Okay, now go on the lower part and check auto save. <clears throat> now, make sure that you don't overwrite the other light cache that you've done for the daylight. Just rename this to light cache 02. Okay, and now just go ahead and hit render. Okay, so we finished computing the light cache. Now, there are a couple of things that I don't really like, and that one is the background, and two is the fact that the spots are too dark. Now, let's begin by correcting the background. Go to Rendering and Environment. Uncheck Use Map and we'll only use a color, just a dark blue color. Something in this area. And click OK. OK. Now, uh, let's take care of the spots. Just go to the front viewport, make sure that the filters are not set to light, so set them to all, and select the spots. Hit Alt Q to enter isolation mode. Now what I want to do, I want to add <coughs> a very light material to the upper part. I will leave the uh, dark color only on this area and the rest will be a very light material. Okay, let's go to front. <coughs> Now, first just convert this to an editable poly. Just right click, convert to editable poly, go to front viewport, and under editable poly, select the polygon sub selection, select all the upper polygons. Let's see. OK, open the material editor, and select an empty slot. Now we're going to transform this standard material into a V-Ray light material. Just double click on it and just assign to selection. And that's it. Okay, and we're going to do the same thing for these spots. Again, convert to red to poly, go to front viewport, select all the upper polygons, open material editor and assign this material. Okay, I think we're good. Just exit isolation mode, switch to camera. Okay. Now, we finished computing the light cache. Let's just open the render setup dialog. As you can see, it has automatically switched to from file. Okay, so we finished computing the light cache. Let's move on and compute the irradiance map. Switch the primary bounces from light cache to irradiance map. Now we're going to do exactly the same settings that we did for the uh, daytime, uh, for the nighttime rendering. 
first check the ambient occlusion. The settings are exactly the same, so this is good. Let's just go a little lower. Under irradiance map, high mode, single switch the mode to single frame. We want to compute another irradiance map and not override to the previous one. So I'm just going to make sure that auto save doesn't want, doesn't save over the previous irradiance map. Just change the name to zero two and hit save. Okay. Settings is okay, everything is pretty much good. Now we're just going to have to render the irradiance map. Hit render. Okay, so we've computed the irradiance map. Now there are a lot, uh, some things that we still need to take care of. First, I don't like the fact that this shadow is very sharp. We just need to blur this shadow. And afterwards, we can just render the entire image. But first, let's make sure that the radiance map has been saved. Okay, the radiance map, the mode is from the file. Okay, so we pretty much finished the computation of all the indirect illumination. Okay, first of all, let's take care of the smoothing of the shadow. Let's just set our filter to lights and select one of the spots. Now, we've set the, the shadow to V-Ray Shadow. Let's open the V-Ray Shadow parameters. Now, what I want to do here is make sure that Area Shadow is checked. This will automatically blur my shadow with depth of 10 by 10 by 10. I think this is pretty much good. Okay. So, another thing, I see the reflection of uh, the V-Ray light here, and I don't want to see that. I'm just going to have to set this fury light to do not produce any specular and reflections. I don't want it to create any specularity and to be visible in reflections. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is just set up the rendering for the final image. Okay, let's begin. So the resolution will be 800 by 600. Now just check the render output, save file, and click on files. I'm just going to rename this to night time. Set the image to JPEG and don't forget about the override. We set the gamma to 1.6. Okay, and then hit save. Okay, let's move on. Let's move to the V-Ray tab. Let's change the image sampler from adaptive subdivision to adaptive DMC. Let's check the adaptive DMC new sample. It's set from 1 to 4. Okay, this is good. And the last thing we're going to do in direct illumination, we said that it's finished. We're going to set the settings tab. First thing, noise threshold. Let's decrease the value, value to 0 0.001. Let's increase the minimum sample's value to 16 and the global subdivision multiplier to 2. Furthermore, I'm going to increase the bucket size to 64 by 64. Okay, the last thing that we have to do is just hit render. Okay, so this is the final result. Uh, as you can see, it took some time to render. Thanks for watching, and I hope I will see you in the next tutorial. So, bye.